Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Nigel Canning. I'm a UK sales engineer covering the south of the UK for Zizel. I've got my new, uh, colleague's name up there, Daniel Marsh. He covers the north. He's obviously not on the uh, conference today, but just if you ever watch these um, webinars in the future via a recording, then at least you've got two contacts for the UK sales engineer, both north and south. So with that, any delay, we'll get on with the actual subject of the day. So basically, what we want to do today is to go over our advanced threat protection series uh, network security solution and some of the recent platform additions and obviously firmware software updates that have gone through recently and how we see it uh, increasing sort of the, the range of um, customer size, should we say, that the, that the products, product family now covers. So I just want to go over basically, you know, what sort of problems that customers are facing from a network security point of view, give you some overview of the actual product range coverage, go over some of the threats and how the, uh, the ATP solution along with the, the cloud enablement works. Obviously, there's also an element on visualization and reporting, some highlight features from the what's called the ZLD 4.35 software release, which, which applies to uh, the ATP and the USG series. And there's some useful information at the end, obviously ordering numbers and some appendix details. So let's get going. So obviously what are the main problems that we see businesses facing today? Obviously a lot of the small businesses are very vulnerable to network security issues and security breaches. They obviously don't have a full-time IT support staff. They obviously can suffer substantially if they do get internet security breakout uh, threats, breaking out viruses or, or bots or anything like that, and it can cause them a substantial amount of downtime. And obviously so there's some figures that have come in from various uh, benchmark studies that show what a, what a hit the business can take. So in this instance, you're talking about 40% downtime for any sort of security issue that's been um, infected. Some other figures that have come in also, obviously, you can have malicious or criminal attacks, and they tend to account for a roughly sort of 50% of the actual um, issues that a customer might face. Obviously, some of them, you know, we all make mistakes, it can be human error, you know, system glitches or power supply failures, but by far and away, the biggest area, the biggest issue is, is network security attacks, whether or not that be malicious or criminal attacks. And obviously, small, small businesses, as I've just said earlier on, because they lack budget, and the, and the skills to actually deal with these things on a daily basis, they are particularly vulnerable. And obviously um, hackers and so on and so forth, they, they take advantage of that vulnerability and specifically go out there and target small businesses. Obviously they lack a, a security budget, which is fair enough. They don't necessarily have training or staffing in place to deal with those threats. The threats themselves are becoming more and more sophisticated. So even people in well-funded organizations, which are Know, big big corporates um, suffer outages and they've got well-funded network security teams. Sometimes you find that maybe people within the business don't support investment in network security and obviously it actually is quite difficult to get good staff that are, uh, that are well-versed in cybersecurity issues. And obviously if you've got fairly old infrastructure you might have operating systems that are fairly out of date Perhaps they're not correctly patched and updated or applications that are on laptops and desktops that aren't updated. All of these issues come together to create quite a vulnerable, quite a vulnerable environment for small and medium sized businesses. So where do these activities come from and why are they, why, why are these threats sort of never out of date? Well, obviously, um, you're doing a daily business and you're not necessarily concentrating on, on network security issues, but obviously the hackers are out there 24 by seven across the globe. They're not after you personally, they're just trying to find uh, vulnerable targets and then they investigate those targets, find out what they're actually doing, whether or not there's any useful information they can glean, so on and so forth. And this is going on literally 24 by seven, 365 days a year, it never ever stops. So you really, you really do need a good security solution to help counter these threats. So coverage versus performance is, is another big issue that we'd like to highlight. Does the device itself have good performance? Can it cover all of the kind of security threats that are out there? And it's not limited by capability. 
So potentially you haven't got a great budget to spend on a security appliance. So you know you have to be realistic about it. And obviously you don't necessarily have the manpower or the maintenance or the, or the patching infrastructure to keep it up to date. And this is where we feel our platform comes into its own. And this is why we've called it the advanced threat protection solution. So we classify it as a next generation firewall and it has a balanced approach, as the title says, to deliver best of breed security coverage without compromising your network's performance. So we have gone down the route of having localized hardware, on-premise hardware, with a security engine inside it that can also tap into the power of Zizor's cloud security engine as well. So although they might seem physically relatively small devices, their capabilities and their, import and their performance is very substantial indeed. So we can have a cloud-based database which has literally billions of signatures. It can be adaptive. So as the threats themselves um, evolve, it can adapt as well. It has a stay up to date mechanism via what we call threat intelligence and machine learning. So all of the threats that are detected by all ATP devices and by the, the, uh, the Zizor security cloud are fed back into the solution and then they feed back down to the ATP so it's always kept up to date. And then we also have basically greater visibility with analytic, analytics and reporting because obviously we can see what all the ATPs are actually um, witnessing in terms of threats and so on and so forth and we can report back on those. So around about six months ago there were essentially three products in the family which is the ATP 200, the ATP 500 and the ATP 800. Now during the second half of 2019 hopefully you can see on this graph that we're expanding the portfolio down to the ATP 100 which, which covers sort of um, 250 megabits of uh, unified threat management scan rates and then you see the UTM throughput goes up as we move <coughs> excuse me as we move between sort of, uh, business sizes and obviously the number of staff the number of devices the internet link speed so on and so forth so you can see now that we've got a nice broad spectrum of portfolio products um, obviously there's a, a new device on there that's due out next year as well called the ATP 700 and you can see, roughly speaking, on this graph where it all fits in. This is actually quite a useful uh, graph to have to hand. So the slides will be available after the webinar, and obviously there's a recording as well. But if you ever need to sort of calibrate what model you should discuss with a customer, this might actually be quite a useful slide to have to hand. These next few slides basically characterize each of the hardware specifications of each device. So you've got a throughput capacity, as you can see there, the number of devices, so the number of WAN ports, the number of LAN ports, USB storage for backing up configurations and so on and so forth. And then there is a realistic real world network performance throughput. These devices can also manage access points. So they can also act as essentially an on-premise access point controller. So we're specifying the maximum number of access points a particular device can manage. And obviously this ATP 100 device is a fanless device. If we move on to the 200, you see that the, the capacities and the rates go up. The number of ports, the WAM ports go up to two WAM ports. So if you wanted failover to a 4G LTE or 5G next year device, you'll be able to connect that into the second WAM port. Obviously the real world performance goes up, the number of access points, and it's still a fanless design. So the 500 and the 800, they go up substantially. One of the things that's it's worth pointing out with the 500 and the 800 is that they can be put into a high availability pro mode. So they can be a pair of high availability devices, basically. And obviously the 800 has got even more ports. They're, they can all be um, used as WAN or LAN. There's no, no differentiator. And once again, obviously, the number of access points has gone up substantially. So as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as um, providing network security, it can also manage, the, in this instance, a large number of access points. So we're going to get on now to the coverage and the performance that it gives you. So it genuinely does offer best-in-class protection features. By leveraging all these different attack um, securing mechanisms from the Zizor Security Cloud, we can feed that information down to a smart database that is held within the local scan engine. Now that smart, smart 
database evolves as time moves on so all of the sort of the the, the most common or the the attacks that are being seen by um, our security cloud the most common attacks are fed back down to the smart database and the smart database is a permanently evolving uh, scan database basically that's always up to date so the various types of threat patterns can be accumulated and identified with machine learning the Zizor cloud as I say, keeps learning from all the different threats that it sees so you know different file scannings or URL blocking patterns that come in if you're experiencing um, intrusion detection attack patterns they can be updated and fed back down to the smart database obviously there's an element of um, the most popular um, attacks that you can see those graphs are built up and fed back down to the smart database and obviously you can block on application profiles you can do geographical IP reputation so you know if you wanted to block a particular country China Russia whatever you can do that and there's a new feature which I'll describe in a minute which is IP reputation so as it picks up um, particularly from botnets and stuff like that IP ranges and, and subnets that are that are known to be actively suspicious they can be uh, blocked or reputed straight away so size of the device or the solution perhaps would be the better way of explaining it does matter so although these are relatively small physically sized devices by leveraging the the Zizor security cloud in real time clearly their their scope and their scale of uh, securing your network expands you know exponentially so the anti-malware so that's viruses scanning content filtering so that's blocking out things like say executable attachments or zip files with dodgy um, content inside it and obviously as we also said with reputation um, you can have a, a massive increase in the scale of the um, solution so as i said the the cloud database itself which is a live file reputation and uh, idp attack patterns it lives all the time so it gives you far greater coverage extends the search coverage and it's not limited what we need to get across to you that the actual scale of the the threats that can be prevented is not limited to the smart database you are also including the entire size of the uh, of the size of security cloud in your reputation so the reputation service as it says here a vast number of the threats can li literally be stopped by the uh, reputation service these are the most common threats that, that are living and, and alive on the network at the moment so these reputation these um, IP reputation links can actually stop threats before they even try to enter the into your uh, private network and obviously they are detected very early on essentially when the TCP type connection is initially made so once that TCP connection is detected and it's then reputed that state is maintained and you no, no longer have to worry about any traffic coming at it because there is no state so no traffic will be allowed through so what it means that with the reputation filter you can have a smaller hardware device but still have a highly capable solution which is manageable yet it leverages the size or uh, security cloud nonetheless so this is just trying to get across just give some water is how the smart database can boost efficiency so if everything had to be on the engine within the device you would look at say this is a test result internally sort of 182 megabits of scan rate and the performance is relatively low by using a smart intelligent database and cloud query back to the size security cloud we were able to see test results much higher up in the sort of 650 megabits range so an increase in performance of almost three times so literally the device itself is synchronizing with with these ISO security cloud all the time to maintain the integrity and the, and the freshness for want of a better word of the smart database itself then we want to talk about some of the uh, updates to threat intelligence and machine learning and basically how that empowers up to the minute security cloud features so all these threats are coming in and are being analyzed by the security cloud using machine learning and sandboxing technologies so any unknown threats go into the sandbox where they're taken apart in in a, in a safe and secure way they don't go anywhere near the ATP device on premise and those threats are then built up and reputation uh, database 
entries are created and then they are fed back down to the smart database that lives on the device itself. And obviously with the sandbox sandboxing technology, unknown threats, these sort of so-called zero day threats can be understood and turned into threat intelligence as well and hence fed back down to the ATP itself. So if um, a file, an attachment or something like that is trying to do something completely strange, like trying to change a network connection or trying to reconfigure your DHCP settings, which no way should say a PDF or an executable should be doing. The sandboxing understands that and then says, well, there's no way that should be doing that file should be doing that. So it blocks it. And that's obviously, you know, brilliant for detecting um, zero day type threats. One of the things we uh, we do need to point out is that the Zizor Security Cloud leverages a lot of relationships with some enterprise grade um, security providers. And these are some of them that we have um, commercial agreements with. And they are used in various engines to detect threats, to uh, filter threats. Obviously, we use different antivirus providers so that you've got multiple providers. So if one was to miss something, another one clearly wouldn't. We've got some very high uh, grade enterprise security engines, which we have uh, licensed and then also feed into the, the whole um, size or security cloud ecosystem. So really what we want to try and get across is that it is a global solution that we are um, offering and it really does therefore um, allow you to counter you know, the global threats that you see. So all of the um, ATPs in the world and obviously the size of security cloud detection engines as well are feeding into this one ecosystem that then feeds back down to your on-premise device for, to its smart database engine. So the whole the whole ecosystem, you know, is literally a global 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 solution, which clearly is what the internet is, and this provides a real time defence via synchronisation of all of the top ranked threats that you can see amongst different um, global regions. Now we just want to go over some analytics and reporting because one of the issues is obviously seeing what's going on. So obviously, what you want to see is who is attacking you and from where, what exactly target wise are they trying to attack? Are they trying to target your phone system or a web server or get onto your file server? What methods are being used to attack? Are they just trying to make uh, connections into well-known ports? And obviously things like what time? And that whole um, quadrant of um, measured entities is added together to create particular threat vi threat visibility. And then within the GUI of the ATP, you can start to see some of these threats coming at you. So this is one example. I just wanted to give a couple of examples of, of what the GUI can offer, for instance. So obviously sandboxing, <clears throat> it can see that a threat has come in. This In this instance, it's an executable. You can see the time that it came in, that obviously it got sent off to the sandbox to be scanned. The threat was highlighted, so in this instance, it tried to come in via HTTP, it was an executable. What was the device action? And then ultimately, does it get blocked? So here's the details of it. And this is uh, obviously it's a, a test URL with Palo, Palo Alto Networks. There you go. And then one of the other areas that's of um, increased activity is things like botnets. So the, the threat website also has the ability to show, you know, um, botnet activity, malware, spam, and so on and so forth. But botnet filtering specifically is it's a cloud service that basically provides malicious websites for the ATP series to do a quick check and automatically block the malicious URL. So if you if it sees regular activity from known botnets, it immediately just blocks the IP from that bot, bot, um, botnet command and control center. So obviously with the uh, the website analytics and reporting, it can show you where the top threats are. Perhaps that would help you internally to find out, you know, what internal host is trying to actually contact the botnet, and then you can obviously clean the uh, device up. So know the unknown threat at a glance in this one. This one is about basically the introduction of an IP reputation service. 
So this is a, a cloud service that has been added recently to the ATP security offering. And it basically provides known malicious IP address blocking. So basically the ATP will do a quick check to see if uh, an access is within the blocked malicious range, the dynamically blocked malicious range, and it will just block it. So you can very quickly determine if it's among the, you know, the top N attacking IPs and immediately block it. So rather than have to wait maybe for a, you know, a 24 hour roll around of threat signatures and so on and so forth, it immediately blocks the most common activity that's going on in real time globally. So then you can see which IPs are trying to attack your network and what host are they trying to target and perhaps then you can feedback as to who might be up to no good within your office. I think it's important to point out um, there's some extra features and additional features that have got into the latest uh, firmware release which is classed as ZLD 4.35. So, as I just mentioned earlier on, within the security area, there's a new reputation service that's been added called IP Reputation. This is in addition to all of the other uh, security services that are on there. We've also added two-factor authentication to the administration console, so making it even harder to even try and get into the um, admin GUI. Uh, some other things that people should find really useful, obviously, with all the cloud services that are out there from Microsoft Azure, an Amazon Web Service, we have had the device certified with both of those cloud providers so that the ATP can connect seamlessly into the various VPN offerings that those cloud providers offer. We've also in, you know, increased the IPsec Diffie-Hellman groups that it supports, as you can see there, 15, 16, and 18. And obviously the pre-shared key length has been increased to 128 bits as required, or 128 characters, sorry. The other thing a lot of people don't realize in the ATP, it also uh, provides on-premise management of access points, if that's what you wish to do as well. It's an additional feature. You don't have to use it. If you want to use Nebula, you still can. But obviously, if you want to use on-premise access point controller, this now supports the uh, APC controller version 3.4. This provides additional uh, access points in the 11, uh, is it 11 AC Wave 2 support. Obviously, next year it will be AX as well. And that means one of the things you can do is you can do grouped access point firmware upgrades. So if you've got a group of access points on a particular floor or whatever, you can you can independently firmware upgrade those groups and reboot them differently. <clears throat> and also the other thing is there's now dual image firmware support since um, the Zizel's on utility was introduced. So if you want to have the latest firmware installed but still have a failover, fail back to a previous version, you can now do that. Uh, this is really a summary of all the different engines that are on there. Um, basically saying that IP reputation is being added to geographical enforcement, web security, application security, cloud sandboxing, malware blocking, intrusion prevention, and reputation filtering. So IP reputation is being added to it. It's a new service, and it filters up to 10 different types of threats, and it supports all applications protocols. And it significantly increases threat visibility when you work with Secure Reporter in terms of having a, a graphical view of all the threats that you have uh, been secured against. You can much easier, you can see it easier. As you mentioned, we've increased the security layer for your admin console, and it supports SMS or email two-factor authentication mechanisms and that applies to the local admin, and obviously it also includes uh, web and SSH. And hopefully, people are not using Telnet. So basically web and SSH. And then this is a feature enhancement to do with the access point management. This is a brief a brief, uh, brief list of the features there which people can see. So additional access points have been brought online. All of the additional roaming specs for 802.11 R, K, and V have been supported. <clears throat> uh, as we said, we can sort out access point firmware upgrades now via groups. There's also a fallback SSID when the controller is offline if you require. With some of the more upmarket and uh, enterprise feature set access points, as in this instance, the WAC 6303 D-S, which has a, a Bluetooth high beacon, there's proximity sensing for that. There's also a roaming log enhancement. So basically, as, as client devices move around and um, roam between access points, you can see all those transitions going on. And then there's some other uh, smaller features that you can see there, as usual. This is just a quick description, you know, obviously graphical view of the uh, access point controller grouping. So 
different groups of access points so there could be different uh, types of access points or in different areas group firmware upgrades and then you can uh, group the uh, the reboot time as well and this is a, a useful table on the right hand side there to do with the number of access points that a particular ATP model supports so you can choose the appropriate ones the access point management is um, once once you are licensed which obviously when you buy a new device for one year it's it's licensed or you are licensed up to the maximum number of access points there. If you don't renew the license, only two access points subsequently will be supported. The other thing we mentioned earlier on is that basically both the uh, Amazon Web Services VPC and Microsoft Azure VPN offerings are now certified. And we're only, we're only one of seven devices that basically have that VPN gateway functionality that's both been validated both by AWS and by Azure. So that really is quite a substantial investment on our part. Um, so if you've got um, resources within Azure or resources within AWS that your staff within the office want to connect to, you can now use an ATP to seamlessly connect into those cloud-based resources. So that's something that would be quite a, a technically uh, difficult thing for a non-networking person to do, but with the ATP and some GUI guides and wizards and so, so, so on and so forth, you can establish that kind of connectivity. So the license service, this is, these are the part numbers and so on and so forth. By default, uh, the ATP is bundled with a non-transferable, what's called gold security pack license, which includes all of these particular security features. So that's the sandboxing, web security, application patrol, malware blocking, intrusion prevention, geographical enforcement. And obviously now there's the reputation filter that's been added. Uh, managing access points and the secure reporter premium um, analytics service. When you renew for the second year with either a one year or two year gold security license, that license can be transferable if required after renewal. These are the, the part numbers for the particular series and which one is which. So obviously you've got part number within the EU and the UK, US and obviously not particularly relevant, but just in case this webinar uh, is seen outside of the EU, these numbers are on there. But you can see the 100, the 200, the 500, and the 800. Then we've got the licensing information for each particular model because the part number is different for each individual module and the number of years and the number of access points and so on and so forth that you wish to, su to support. That's on these two slides here. And then we've got uh, some enhancements basically that have gone into the 4.35 firmware and here's a list of them basically i won't go through them all but because obviously in the slides you can actually see that um, there's been some improvements to the the high availability pro enhancement uh, there's additional syslogging so if you want to log traffic to a centralized syslogger you can do that um, obviously the ip exception features have been um, added in and that supports antivirus and intrusion detection as well. Uh, the web GUI now supports um, increased encryption if required for a particular region. And one of the useful things is there's uh, the geographical IP reputation service now supports um, continents as a different object that you can refer to just to make it easier. And this is a quite a useful a series of competitive charts that we've put together. So this is basically for each uh, model, ATP 100 in this instance, you've got the com competition and their throughput rates and their scan rates and the number of sessions, uh, the number of IPsec VPN tunnels, the number of SSL tunnels and the number of access points that they manage. So these are quite a useful sales uh, tool for, you, for, <clears throat> for salesmen or saleswomen to basically to compare against the competition. So you've got the 100 here, the 200, 500, and the 800. So these are actually quite, a, if I just go back, you see there's quite a useful series of slides for, uh, for the competition. And I think that's nearly it, actually. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, if anybody's got any questions, I can stay online for a little while. Uh, thank you for your time. And obviously the slides will become available um, once the presentation is uh, converted back to uh, PDF and uh, video format. So anyway, thank you for your time. Have a good uh, afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending. Thank you.